Hey everybody, Radom here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 16 of Stationeers. So last episode, I did mention that I was running a little low on Electrum. So this episode, I'm going to go and make said Electrum. So what I'm going to do is set it up, but then I also want to demonstrate how to use the e-reader. Oops. Um, so what I'm going to do is set up all of the, well, the Oxite and the volatiles that I'll need for the Electrum, and then demonstrate the e-reader. Uh, as this is an important way to familiarize yourself with everything you need to do in-game without breaking immersion and going out to Google. Uh, so first things first, we are going to grab our uh, tablet here. And the battery is very low, so I'm going to swap the old battery in. Old battery out and a new battery in. Alright, so now we know that we have a Atmo analyzer cartridge in here. Let's go find our e-reader, which is right there. Put that baby in. And then um, there is, as you can see down here, 446 recipes. Oop, I just got a hunger caution. I actually still have some of the farming stuff. Oop, uh, let me not open up every single backpack I have. Some of the farming stuff left in my backpack. So let's go make a baked potato because I'm lazy to make something nicer. I will, however, demonstrate this um, later. Once I have a proper lounge in the new base, I will make up some new recipes. Maybe even make a cake. We'll have to see. All right, so I will first feed myself so I don't have the hunger caution sign symbol up top constantly reminding me that I am slowly starving. And then, of course, we will um, look at the e-reader and figure out how to use it properly because I haven't really demoed that nor have I done the tracking beacon all these things will be shown in turn all right so there is the rest of my potato uh, so if you open up the e-reader um, you can scroll through using the mouse wheel all of the recipes now it's a little cumbersome because there's 446 of them but uh, luckily for me uh, Electrum is near the top so here he is here we are uh, the properties of Electrum and then also how to make it. So it's equal parts silver gold. Temperature is 700 Kelvin to uh, 10,000 Kelvin. And pressure is 800 kPa to 2.4 MPa. So it's a pretty low pressure environment that makes Electrum. Uh, compared to steel, let's say. Which is a bit different. So then um, make sure that the furnace is empty. And it is. It, uh, it has a little bit of gas. But it's not enough to... Uh, affect our uh, process here very much. I'll just vent it out a little bit. Okay, most of the gas is vented, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and drop in volatiles, drop in oxides, set that up, burn it, and as you can see the pressure here is uh, good. The reason I was delaying is the pressure needs to be under 2.4 uh, MPa. And once I add in some gold here, as you can see, the pressure climbed above 2.4 because, of course, the gold adds volume to the furnace. So when I mix these two things together, the gold and the silver, the pressure of my furnace is going to be too high to make electrum. And as you can see, if I spit this out right now, it would just be random reagent. What I need to do is use this little outgas vent very briefly probably, drops the pressure down to two, and now magically, boom, Electrum. I love how that works. All right, uh, so what I want to do with this Electrum is I want to uh, make some consoles. <sighs> if I could only type. Uh, but that's gold and copper, or iron and copper that I need for that. That's actually really inexpensive. And I also want to do, um, well, so I guess I should tell you what the end game here is. The end game here is that I want to be able to see what is in my tanks at a quick glance without the atmospheric analyzer. That was the goal. So I am first going to set this up for my CO2 tank because my CO2 tank needs to be monitored uh, more than my other tanks. The other tanks are not going to become hyperpressurized, whereas the CO2 tank might need an escape valve. Um, set up. I could also automate an escape valve, but for now, um, manual is fine. So I'm cranking out two of these consoles. 
Whoa, and the second one went flying. Uh, let's go ahead and switch my belt around. I'm no longer smelting. In fact, well, I guess I could have used the temperature and pressure that was in there, but I didn't really use it in time. Ideally, what I would have done is smelt something else first and then Electrum, because Electrum has a lower pr pressure uh, than most other things. Uh, the next thing I want over here is the uh, pipe analyzer. And we'll crank one of these babies out. And I'm going to be monitoring my pressure and temperature the sort of old school way. There's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, but if we look at circuit board, uh, there is gas display, graph display. Um, I'm going to go with gas display, but I can demo ga uh, graph display too if there is a demand. Graph display displays sort of a graph of pressure and temperature. Uh, it's kind of not that interesting to do in terms of the temperature and pressure of a tank because the temperature and pressure of a tank will just be climbing, so the display would just be a graph that is constantly climbing. Um, and for obvious reasons, that isn't maybe the most interesting graph to look at. Just a constant line or a steady line. Uh, all right, some of these frames need to go because they're gonna be in my way. All right, so the next thing I want to do is to change the piping a little bit here. Uh, not overwhelmingly, but just the, I need a nice straight section but I would like my straight section to not be visible uh, from within my atmospherics room. I want to I want to keep some of the magic uh, out of sight. So what I'm going to do is have a straight section like that, and then put the pipe analyzer um, inside my crawl space. That will be in the crawl space uh, in the base. All right. Next up, I'm going to put consoles down. Now, as you can see, these standard consoles need to be glued to something, right? But the monitors don't. So I'm gonna put uh, one monitor uh, here. No, that's in the ceiling. Here and here. There we go. I'm gonna shove gas displays in them. And then I'm going to power all this jazz on. So let's go ahead and... Um, the monitors We'll have power go up into the ceiling. And then these monitors need to then be oh, come on, let me move around. Need to be then powered on. So we'll put a junction in here. And probably a junction in here. Eventually we'll want the pressure regulator to have power. And then uh, we have to decide, I need to really build out like the power grid for my um, atmospherics. I haven't done that yet. That will be next, I suppose. And what that means is sort of uh, isolating all of my atmospherics to the same power network. And then we can also set up analytics to see how much power it's drawing and controls to turn uh, the power on and off at will. Uh, so what I shall do is to put straight cables in like this and as you can see I'm about to run out of cabling so we'll print some more cables out I could also uh, color code the cables um, that's not a terrible idea having unique Whoa, that was kind of fast. Unique colors for each type of um, um, sub-network. And that's something I could do for sure once I, you know, set up these sub-networks. So the idea is, much like a modern-day fuse box, I would have different systems on different, let's call them fuses, so that I could have all of my atmospherics sort of on the same power network, all of my uh, lounge, which would involve chemistry stations and uh, maybe sleeper um, tanks and stuff like that, all on a different grid, all of my hydroponics on a different grid. So that way uh, I can very easily turn off entire floors. So I would have a few power switches 
in my base, like one to turn off all the displays and monitors of the atmospherics, maybe one to turn off all the lights, so on and so forth. Um, all right, so we've printed up a few cables here. I've decided to run my power uh, like this along the edges of the, uh, the network. And that's where we'll keep it. And I can color this all later. If I really need to uh, paint a bunch of stuff, I can do that. It's, it's paint, fortunately, not that expensive. And I've been, uh, I wouldn't say cheating, but there's multiple ways to paint stuff. And I've been using the, the really cheap method. So one thing that's important is I'm not going to turn my pressure regulator on. I don't want CO2 going into the purple pipe just yet. All right, so given that uh, these are powered on, as you can see, the pipe analyzer can turn on. And this pipe analyzer, uh, when stared at, when can tell me what's in the pipe, what the pressure is in the pipe, what the temperature is in the pipe in Kelvin. That's all good and nice, but what I'd rather have is something that's more visibly pleasing. So I instead am going to construct monitors for each of my tanks like this and this is pretty uh standard practice i'm not doing anything like special or whatever uh most people's atmospherics rooms look pretty similar i'm gonna go into my suit here and grab the data disc the data disc is sort of like a setup disc uh so let's turn on this gas display and this display will do temperature on the left pressure on the right and we're going to grab it from the pipe, pipe analyzer. Now, as you can see, I'm definitely going to need to label these things properly. Um, and when I pull this out, as you can see, boom, the console monitor is now displaying the temperature in Celsius rather than uh, Kelvin. I turn this on. I select its input. Input, once again, will be the pipe analyzer. And pull out the setup disk. And then the pressure is shown. Uh, the pressure is safe until about 60 ish MPA, but I'll probably start working towards venting it out or stop filtering it. Um, now, if I pull out this, uh, this CO2 filter here, this pipe here will start to get hyper pressurized with CO2. Cause what ends up happening is if this is not filtering out the CO2 into the tank, the CO2 will then travel down this line. Not, it's not O2, then travel down this line, it's not pollutant, then travel out here and fill this pipe until it blows up. Um, which means that if you think you're going to overpressurize your tanks, you might want to install systems that allow for it not to be overpressurized. Uh, these, yeah, these heavy filters are barely been used. 97%. So they've only been used about 3%. These heavy filters are made to last. I love the skull and crossbones of the pollutant. Uh, almost, it almost makes me think that uh, pollutants should be colored yellow because the filter's yellow. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna redesign that because I don't really need to. All right. Uh, the um. The handheld tablet that we have here now has an e-reader. I don't need an e-reader. I was just demoing how to use one. Uh, before I do anything else, let me just demo how to use the tracker. Because um, I haven't done that yet. So there are two types of um, tracking methods. There is a tracking method. Well, the tracker will, by default, be able to track other players. Uh, your suit, I guess, comes with a tracking beacon of sorts. Um, so you, when you're playing in multiplayer, you can always track other players. Uh, maybe this won't be the case in the future when there's multiple bases and when there's, uh, some sort of semblance of PVP, but right now, uh, multiplayer is cooperative, um, rather than competitive. But, uh, what you would do is, do I have a tracking beacon anywhere? I probably did. I, you spawn with one, but I might've like destroyed it. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have one anymore. Oh, this also reminds me, the suit that I have has low air. Air being oxygen. Uh, I breathe basically pure oxygen. So what I'm going to do is fill this up. All you got to do to fill this up is to grab your air tank. Um, hold on, let me find the input first. There it is. Grab your air tank and look at this yellow and black section. Stick your canister in, pull your canister out. 
and the pressure in the portable oxygen has gone down, not by much, and then my air tank went from 13, 15 something to 67. I think that's even higher than when I started with. Uh, you start with a, because you start with a portable tank, you start with an insane, I mean insane amount of oxygen. Like, it would, you could probably live on that for like, I don't know, like at least 50 hours or something. Uh, which means that, that make, that because my current farm setting here, this, uh, ooh, actually that brings me to another point. How pressurized is, oh, I have a tracker in. Great. Yeah, that would be problem let me before I demo the tracker let me uh, see about this okay so the pipe that pulls pressure from the uh, the farm is somewhat pressurized but not to the point where I think it's going to burst I was curious about that because I had left I had turned off the filters for a while um, because um, there is Oh, right, I switched it back. There is a decent amount of O2. There's uh, 261 moles of O2 here that if I turned on this filtration system would be vented. Um, if I wanted to capture that, uh, what I could do is set up like a canister or something to grab the O2 or to lead this pipe all the way to my O2 tank over there, which is kind of extreme and I won't be doing that. Um, but uh, yes. This, this system outgasses O2. Uh, and the reason it outgasses O2 is, that, like I said, uh, you start off with an insane big supply of oxygen. Uh, so it's not immediately important to make sure that you're um, capturing it and storing it because you have so much of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and demo the tracker. Not to get too far off track here. Um, we want a kit beacon. This requires steel and solder. So where is our steel? It is in here. Unfortunately, there's a lot of other stuff in here. So there's the solder. You start off with a uh, a portable one that's battery operated uh, beacon that I might have either put into my recycler and forgot about it, or I might have just misplaced it because I really don't see it in any of these... Um, in any of these boxes here. I don't see my tracker. So, uh, but that's a battery operated one and the batteries can run out and can leave you not knowing which way is home. Uh, the beacon one is powered into a power grid. Uh, so all this does, let me just hook it up here cause I already have power there. I flick this baby on, uh, I can rename it. Um, let's call this the farm. Yeah, the farm. Because I only have one farm right now. And if I power the tracker on, now as you can see, I can either track myself, which will always be zero meters away because um, I'm holding it, or it tracks the farm. And that way, uh, if I, let's say I fly away really far from the base and I'm lost or whatever, I mean, I can still see the base, but I'm lost or whatever. As you can see, I'm still fully capable of finding home because my, oh boy, I'm drifting pretty hard. My tracker now points to the farm and you can have multiple beacons. Uh, the battery operated ones are kind of useful if you want to label something temporarily. I think if you stuck a large battery in that thing, it would last a while. The small batteries kind of run out on the beacons. I don't use beacons very often because it's just one more thing to remember to plug in. It's also one more thing to have to um, carry the uh, the cartridge for tracking, uh, which limits your inventory space. But as you can see here, very, very simple. I can find my way back home. Uh, and this is how to use tracking. All right, let's take that out and put the Atmo analyzer back in because I'm going to use that a lot more often. And the network analyzer, I, I, I find myself using the network analyzer and the atmospheric analyzer a heck of a lot more than anything else. All right. So at this point, uh, we have hooked up the, um, the, our first 
CO2 tank to read uh, the pressure and temperature of the CO2 tank. The the pressure and temperature, well, the pressure will will um, climb and then the temperature will fluctuate. Of course, if the temperature goes up, the pressure also goes up. Gas expands as it heats up. Um, so this is measuring pressure, not moles. If I want to see moles, I can look at my pipe analyzer. Uh, and I have 4.8 K mole carbon dioxide. Uh, if you don't know what moles are, you must have not taken high school uh, chemistry, but I'm really not in a position to explain what a, a mole, mole is. is sort of um, a unit of atomic measurement, like how you have grams of gold, you have moles of a gas. Uh, yes, but that's all I'm really going to go into there. So the next thing I need to do with these monitors here is actually label the damn thing. So this is the um, CO2 pipe analyzer and the um, CO2 temp and CO2 pressure. If I don't end up labeling these things, it will be really, really, really hard to hook up pipe analyzers and uh, monitors for each type of gas because what will end up happening is I will have no idea which object is which. Uh, additionally, if you wanted to uh, check, for instance, how much power an object draws. Uh, that would be a network analyzer task. Now you can also build, just like you can have consoles that monitor pressure, you can have consoles that monitor uh, network. And I'll do that just in a second. But uh, if I take a look at my, where did my network analyzer go? Oh, it's literally in my hand. Wow. One of those moments, huh? Um, so now if I point my network analyzer at the cable that's coming off my APC, I can see what things are drawing power. So for instance, the airlock doors being idle are drawing about 10 watts each. The back pressure and pressure regulators are drawing 100 watts each. The temperature reader is 10 watts. The math and min, math max and math uh, min temps re, uh, logic systems are 25 each. The Writers for the cooler and heater are 10 each, uh, wall lights, so on and so forth. And then the farm, which is my beacon, is 300 watts. So the farm, the beacon, uh, draws a considerable amount of power. Uh, so if you see here, it's 450 watts. I turn this on, it should be 750, uh, which is another reason early game, you, if you get lost often... Um, you might want to try to get a better sense of direction because 300 watts all the time is not super cheap. I'm not saying it's like super expensive and it will bankrupt you power wise, but uh, when you have like one solar panel, power panel, that's kind of a lot. Um, that is the equivalent of like, uh, how many watts was my lights? Like 25 each. So it's a, <laughs> it's quite a lot of lights. Uh, let's see. The lights at 50, 50 each. So. You know, it's the equivalent of six of these giant lights blaring is just one little beacon. I can afford it right now, like if I wanted to leave this on, because uh, I've got a kit battery and a lot of port power storage, but um, it's something to keep in mind. So I digress. We will, now I am happy to demonstrate the power reading. So um, you will want a cable analyzer for that. And we're going to need to stick some silicon in there. A cable analyzer is just like a pipe analyzer, but for cables. And if we install it, um, if I install it here, as you can see, it will show me my actual and required power. My the potential power is like how much is stored. So I have, um, you know, a certain amount of megawatts installed, or uh, you know. Uh, available on demand so to speak uh, and then of course it only analyzes the cable network it's on so if I install it up here you know it will have a different requirement or if I install it here it will have a different requirement so on and so forth uh, these are really useful to install uh, when you are not sure what's drawing power or when you want to monitor your power um, so for instance if I walk over here and I slap it down, let's say around here. 
oh, of course I angled it wrong. I can get a pretty good read of what kind of power my current atmospherics is drawing. And the potential power is just what's in the power grid. So the idea here is to try to minimize the amount of power you're using. So for instance, if you don't need to display this kind of stuff, you know, uh, and eventually I can hook all of this up to a power switch, my power usage goes down, right? Uh, so it's nice to have everything powered back, powered on all the time, but it does get expensive. Um, you know, we're talking just these few devices here. If I look at it with a, um, a network analyzer, uh, you can see each filter unit, the filtration units themselves don't require a lot of power, but the CO2 temp pressure and pipe analyzer require 150 each. So that's 150 times six or seven. As you can see, this would add up uh, fast. I am going to add them in, uh, but it's helpful to put them on a power switch uh, and also to, to monitor your power to make sure that you don't brown out or something like that. Because if you brown out in a farm, for instance, uh, you might end up with dead plants because if you can't heat the room or cool the room, whichever is required, uh, your plants will die. Dead plants is sad. So let's go ahead and crank out some gas display and some more pipe analyzers. Uh, this is going to require our electrum. So this is gas display for two more. I'm just going to have it make uh, four more pipe analyzers. Yeah, that will work. I need a lot of parts, a lot of very expensive parts. As you can see, I'm already out of copper there. Uh, where do I have copper? I have some copper here. Oop, I didn't grab it. So if you want to add a lot of the automated um, monitoring to your base, it is it comes at a somewhat of expensive cost. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. It's pretty cool when you set it all up and everything is nicely color coded and labeled and at a quick glance you can see sort of how healthy your systems are, your plumbing is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it's not something you wanna do until you can afford it. This is not something I would have added to my, um, my original farm for instance, because it's unnecessary. Is that facing? No, that's not facing down. It's really hard for me to tell. I don't know why. Eyeballs, man. Use them. There we go. That one's facing down. And uh, let's go fix the other. Um... We had some extra pipes. I know I'm, I'm cranking out a lot of gas display over here. I probably should stop. And we ran out of resources. All right, let's go ahead and uh, make sure that these pipes are the right color. All right, and that will be for pollutants. And this way, at a quick glance, we'll be able to monitor uh, the health of our atmospherics. And that's, that's all this does in a very complicated way. That's really all it does. Making sure that um, <clears throat> we have pressure and, and whatnot. All right, uh, we did crank out some consoles and I'll work towards setting all of this up. Or rather we cranked out some boards. So it's two gas displays per gas, so two, four, or one, two, three, four, five. We need one more, actually. I ran out of resources of gold. And that will be enough for every single display. Uh, display that we'll need and we'll set all this up all right and then we'll need consoles so 
six. A lot of circuit boards. And I'm about to run out of iron here. So these stack, but I know I need 12. So we have seven tanks. We've already set up one of the tanks. So that's six tanks, two consoles per tank. So that's 12 consoles. Let me uh, throw this batch over. Could have been a better throw. Oh boy, oh boy, doing this in bulk. This is console number 10. Two more. And I certainly don't have enough cabling for all this, so we'll start cranking out some cables in a second. Now, I don't believe that my atmospherics is going to draw more than um, uh, enough wattage to require um, heavy cables. The atmospherics is also going to be separated from HVAC. Uh, so the heating, or H, or I should say AC and H. The V is ventilation. Um, and I'm keeping that separate because I know heating and cooling is very power hungry. Is this... He's about there that I set the monitors up. There we go. Monitor. Alright, nice and beautiful. I'll also have to paint them, or I don't have to paint them, but I should paint them the associated color. Alright, thank you sir for all your cables. In a future uh, tool or construction room, I can have these all uh, uh, nicely set up with um, stackers and things so they don't spew everywhere. All right, I'm going to grab as many of the gas supplies as I can. These kind of circuit boards don't stack. So, um, and then each of these uh, circuit boards, I will also need glass. But I, I do think I have a nice stack of glass. And I'll need to label each one. Uh, something that would be maybe a little bit more interesting is I can show my power usage in a graph. The gas here uh, is not that, all that interesting to graph because it won't fluctuate as much, but my power usage could very well fluctuate quite a lot um, and therefore be a lot more interesting to graph display. So once I set up uh, monitors for power, um, I'm going to set it up like power per system, maybe power per floor. I'm not quite sure yet. All right, so let's construct all these monitors. And the reason I'm using monitors, you can use LED displays. You can use really any of the types of consoles that display data. Uh, the beauty of the monitors here is they will float on their own, whereas the other things, the other LED consoles, will need to be um, attached to a frame. You can then remove the frame after you've cabled it up, and they'll free float. But um, one of the advantages of... of uh, going with the monitors is I don't need to do that extra step. All right, and then we'll need three more pipe analyzers. One for each type of gas. Uh, which means I should lay out the pipes for it now. Come on. All right. I'm going to start flying. Because uh, it was a little bumpy. Uh, so blue. And 
and orange. Oh, I didn't glass that one up. Excess pipes dropped. We can even paint them back to yellow. That's a steel sheet. Alright, did I miss a monitor? I don't believe I did. Good. Uh, what? A pipe analyzer, right? Yes. I need three more analyzers. So gold and electrum. My electrum is in this, as is just about everything else. There's the electrum. There's the gold. One. Most of these will display nothing, of course, uh, because most of these tanks don't, or not most, but three-sevenths of these tanks don't even have anything in them. The volatiles, the water, and the nitrous oxide are empty. So... And quite honestly, facing these downwards might not be the best call here. So I'm going to change this around because once I have a crawl space, I'm going to want to face them up. Because if I face them down, I'm not going to be able to read them. Uh, ever. Because they'll face the floor. So I'm going to have them face the crawl space. And that way, if I actually want to see how many literal moles of something I have, uh, I can do it. Now, the one thing is, because I uninstalled it and reinstalled it, um, the, the monitors here have been reset. So, uh, CO2 pipe analyzer. And then when I go into slap the data disk back in. Oh, shush. I then have to pick the uh, CO2 pipe analyzer. Oh, is this? No, it's hooked up. And this baby needs to be turned on. And there we go. Now we're back to monitoring. Uh, it's telling me one of my filters died. Cool. I have another filter in there. Uh, I think what I'm going to do... I'm kind of tired of getting that message. Let's go and make a heavy carbon dioxide filter out of steel and copper. Okay, where's my steel and my copper? And this will last for like 40 hours, I think, the heavy filters. So I will no longer be annoyed by the message. Because I've been recycling filters that have been dying on me. All right, come on, healthy filter. Ah, it takes a while. Uh, what else do I need? I need cables. I'm going to need even more cables than I've made. Uh, I think all of my copper, really, I just have, I am very low on copper, but I have a hundred left to be smelted, so let's get that done. So I only have like 30 something copper, we're about to use 10 of it on this filter, mostly because I'm just frustrated that I keep getting the warnings. So now we have a heavy filter installed, uh, we'll leave these small filters in there as backup um, in case the heavy filter dies, we don't want to be without filter filtration because our helmet will f uh, fill up with um, carbon dioxide and eventually suffocate us. If that ever happens, you just hit one and go flush. Flush pulls all of the um, gas in your helmet and puts it into your waste tank, uh, including oxygen in this case. It would flush everything. So if you have no filter, I guess 
in a pinch, you can just constantly flush out your helmet. I think that would functionally work. It would be insanely sloppy, but functionally it should work. If you're really suffocating in a pinch is the only time I ever suggest doing that. All right, and then uh, what kind of time do I have? I am over my time, so I'm gonna have to finish up some of the, sort of these beautiful displays uh, next episode. So let me stop all of my stuff in progress here. Uh, if you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, drop me a line. Keep in mind that all of this is pre-recorded, um, but this is the last pre-recorded episode. So next episode will be pre-record or will be recorded with all the feedback that you've provided since the start of this pre-recording. If you have any. Uh, if you just want to discuss stationers, there's been a lot of good discussions about um, mechanisms, networks, that kind of thing on Discord. And I hope you tune in next time. Adios, everyone. Thanks for watching.